Islam. Um, I announced that the meeting, is, all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the Circle 7 in Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom, and Justice. If we can all rise and face the east, feet in a 45 degree angle or standing on your square, as we may say, arms up, extended out into a cactus pose, two fingers on the right, five, five fingers on the left, and repeat after me, Allah. 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 Father of the universe. Father, Father of the universe. universe. Father of love. Father, Father of love. Truth. 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 Peace. 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 Freedom. 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 And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector. Allah is my protector. My guide. My guide. And my salvation. And my salvation. By night and by day. By night and by day. And by day. Through his holy prophet. Through his holy prophet. Drew Ali. Drew Ali. Islam. I rise and give perfect praise to Father God Allah, Father of the universe. The creator that made you and that made me. Islam, I rise and give honors to his prophet, Noble Drew Ali, for bringing us our divine creed and nationality. I rise and give honors to the forerunner of the prophet, Brother Marcus Mosiah Garvey, for paving the way for purity. Islam, I also rise and give honors to Brother E. Millie Ill, the first appointed Supreme Grand Sheik by the prophet himself. I rise and give honors to all Supreme Grand Sheiks that came after Brother E. Millie Ill all the way down to the current Supreme Grand Sheik, Brother K. Dandridge Ill. And also, we never forget Brother Emeritus, Supreme Grand Sheik, Brother D. Bailey Ill. We also rise and give honors to the Supreme Grand Council, honors to our flag, and honors to all you Moors in attendance. Islam? Islam. Islamism. Islam. Islam. Islamism. Okay, I want to make sure that we announce that the meeting is now open. All right. And we thank all you Moors in attendance. Brother Jackson Bay, would you please read the, the excuse me, the divine constitution and bylaws? Islam. Arise giving perfect praise to Allah, honest to the prophet. And honest to you, Muslims, salvation, Allah, unity, the Moore Science Temple of America, the Divine Constitution and Bylaws, Act 1, the Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the Moore Science Temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce law with the assistance of the Prophet and the Grand Body of the Moore Science Temple of America. The Assistant Grand Sheik is to assist the Grand Sheik in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice and is known before the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Act two, all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to Circle Seven and love, truth, peace, freedom, justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on a Friday, the first man was formed in flesh and on a Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended unto his father God Allah. For that cause, Friday is the holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Act three, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Moore Science Temple of America. No member is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because of lies, love. Act 4. All members must preserve these holy and divine laws, and all members must preserve the laws of the government because by being a Moorish American, you are part and partial of the government and must live the life accordingly. Act 5. This organization of the Moore Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. Act six, with us, all members must proclaim their nationality, and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are part and partial of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Juali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites, 
who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7. All members must promptly attend their meetings and become part and partial of, of, of all uplifting acts at the Morris Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Morris Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Ju Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah, Noble Ju Ali, founders. Moorish American prayer, Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Juali, amen. The Morris Science Temple of America, home office of Noble Juali, home office, Chicago, Illinois, USS, oh, sorry, USA, Islam, Islam, Islamism. All right, Islamism, thank you, brother. Okay, um, hang on one second. All right, uh, Brother Davis L., if you have your Quran questionnaire, could you please read the additional laws? Uh, peace time. I can't do that at the moment. I'm in the car. Islam. All right. Let's see. Brother Seymour Bay, are you able to read as well? Peace. Islam. Islam. First, I rise and give praise to Allah, Father of the universe. I give honors to the Prophet Noble Drew Ali, to the forerunner Marcus Marcia Garvey, and to all the faithful Moors on the call. Questionnaire and additional laws for the Moorish American by the Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Act one. Grand sheiks and governors and heads of all temples, all businesses. Each said temple must be approved by the prophet, noble Jura Ali, before acted upon by any member. And let it be finance, property, or any line of life that will cause a member to sacrifice finance, etc., that will cause support of any group or members. Any former officer that violates these laws is subject to be removed from his office under heavy restrictions, etc., by the prophet or grand sheik. Act two, all members are to attend their added meetings and their public meetings promptly. If a member is found standing around in a meeting period, shall be fined 50 cents on the first case and on the second will be fined $1, which shall go to your emergency fine. If a member is working, his monthly dues must be paid. And if he is, if he has money in the bank, he must subscribe for as much as he is able to to the Morse Uplifting Fund because it takes finance to uplift a nation. Act three, it is, uh, it is the lawful and divine duty of every good member if he is able to finance to aid me in saving the nation. And if he does not, he is an enemy to the cause of uplifting his own people and justice must catch you. Let it be he or she according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice as I have the power invested in my hands and have the have to enforce the law in order to save the nation. Act four, all members while up making a public speech must not use any assertions against the American flag or speak radical against the church or any member of any organizational group because we're to teach love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Act five, all members must promptly attend their meetings and send their children to Sunday school. And let and the teacher must confirm himself to the questionnaire and let every member exercise his five senses who is able to do so, because out of your Sunday school come the guiders of the nation. Act six. With us, all members must proclaim their nationality, and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed, that they may know that they are part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779, 
and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men must now proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained noble Drew Ali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7. All members must promptly attend their meetings and become part and parcel of all uplifting acts of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moore Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey their father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, noble Jurali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. Islam, Islam, Islamism. Islamism, all right. Thank you, brother. Brother Cole Bay, would you please read the writs? Islam. I rise and give honors to the great God Allah. Rise and give honors to our prophet, noble Jurali. Rise and give honors to all Moors on the call and attendance. And rise and give honors to all Muslims across the planet. <clears throat> to the members of the Moor Science Temple of America, Islam, this is instruction from your prophet, Noble Jew Ali. Be faithful unto your forefather divine and national creed that you will be blessed for your good deeds that you sow in the flesh. Allah is the one that judges the world and his judgment is on now, but the weak can comprehend it not. The end of times are drawing near, so says Allah, to his divine prophet, I, Noble Jew Ali. And that is why many hearts have turned to stone. Many have eyes to see, but cannot see, ears to hear, but cannot hear. At least they will be confounded of their sins. These are the trying hours now, dear Moors. And every evil spirit is moving, and they are trying every weak mind to overthrow and drag out the true foundation that has been laid and cause confusion in the minds of the ones that do believe. But if you have the true love of Allah, and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not what you hear or see, but will sacrifice the utmost of your very life to protect your movement and your prophet. Watch your enemies, dear Moors. Your enemies are the ones that speak against your prophet and ridicule him to the very lowest, and the ones that speak against your divine and national principles of your temples. Act accordingly, and Allah will bless you for your good work. Peace, your divine prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Prophet warns all Muslims to be read in every meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must end all radical speeches while at work, in their homes, and on the streets. We are for peace and not destruction. Stop flashing your cars to Europeans. It causes confusion. Remember, your car is for your salvation. Failure to obey these orders will be of severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And when these principles are violated, justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings towards the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moors movement will receive the rewards from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the law laid down to them by their prophet. If they lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in their card and button, cease wearing their turban and fez, and return to the state what I, the prophet, found you. This is a holy and divine movement founded by the prophet, Noble Jew Ali. And the prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The prophet, therefore, is sending out the divine plea to all Moorish Americans that they do their part in protecting the prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Peace, noble Juali. To be proclaimed at every meeting. Islam, I'm glad to know I have a few faithful Moors among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation they claimed that I was a joke and unreal. But now since they found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Ajax must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens, they are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that attribute to the movement and uplifting funds 
the ones that pay their divine respects to me and the movement will be remembered. That is why I'm calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moors movement. I need finance and I need it badly. Never before have I needed finance so badly as I do at present, so I may shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world would not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being here. It has been proven by my works, which I have performed in the past few years. Prophet, noble Jew Ali. Islam, Islam, Islamism. All right, Islamism. Thank you, brother. Okay, um, the Moabitess, little sister, Douglas L is gonna read the, the Quran questionnaire and then we're gonna discuss it. Then we'll open the floor to questions. Hang on one minute. Islam, I raise and give pride, praise to Allah and his prophet. <laughs> Honors to his prophet. I'm gonna be reading 30, 30 through 40. What was the nationality of Ruth? Ruth was a Mor Moabitess. What is the modern name for Moabites, Moroccans? Where is the Moroccan Empire, Northwest Amex, Mexum. What is the modern name for Mexum? Africa. What is the title given to our ruler in Morocco? Go. Sultan. Where do we get the name Jesus from the East? What does the name Jesus mean? Me Jesus means justice. Did the angel give to the child that was called Jesus a holy name? Yes, but it cannot be used by those who are slaves in sin. What is an angel? An angel is a thought of a law manifested in flesh, human flesh. What are angels used for? To carry messages to the four comers of the world, corners of the world to all nations. What is our prophet to us? He is an angel of Allah who is sent to bring us everlasting gospel of Allah. What is everlasting gospel? It is a saving power that comes from Allah through our ancient four, I mean ancient fathers by his prophet. Islam. All right, Islam. Thank you. You did a great job. Islam. All right, Islam. Uh, we're gonna discuss this uh briefly um if anybody has anything they want to add to this feel free to speak up or just um unmute your mic but just going back up to question 31 says what is the modern name for moabites and then we're given the answer moroccans all right so um with this the prophet is is relinking us to our ancient past and letting us know that the ancient Moabites are also the Moroccans, right? The modern day Moroccans. And um, by him relinking us to this, uh, he, he's, he's linking us back in to our, our great heritage as the creators of civilization. Not only does a lot of people associate just the Moors with Spain, what they did in, in Europe, but, um, the brother Jose Pimenta Bay, who wrote the book of Delos Children in the New World, he talks about in there, he, he has a quote where he's saying it's significant to note that the term Moabitum is frequently used by the medieval European writers to describe the Moorish inhabitants of Africa of Mauritania. And then it says those who are familiar with both the Quran and the Bible would recognize the references Moab or Moabite. Right. And so um, he, he makes that link too. 
that Moabite refers to the Moorish people, the modern day Moors or Moroccans. All right. And by the prophet relinking us to this, he's linking us to our ancestors who built, who are the creators, literally the creators of civilization. Right. We have this legacy of Atlantis, you know, which is seen as a myth. It's so ancient, it's seen as a myth, right? The ancient Egyptian culture, the Canaanites, Moabites, the Cushites, the Moors. And this is where universities, libraries, all of this stuff came out of our ancestors. They were the first scientists, the first scholars, the priests of all the highest orders. They're the ones who established the, um, the ancient mystery schools. And this is where the wisdom from the ancient societies was preserved in. And people had to prove themselves worthy of, of learning this wisdom just to get into the ancient mystery schools in, in ancient Egypt. So everybody wasn't even allowed to get this information. And then everything came out of that, right? So he relinked us back into that. So we don't have to go off and join any other organizations or anything. We've been relinked back in. All we have to do is return to our own ancient and divine creed, right? The, the European um, deemed us three fifths of a human, right? And, and two of those fifths that are missing was our nationality and divine creed. The nat our nationality allows us to, to trace who we are, which is what the trust is based off of for all the families of nations. And then our divine creed, which which relinks us back into who we truly are, Allah, amen. And by knowing this, we are now whole again. All right, so moving on to um, 32. Where's the Moroccan empire? And the answer is Northwest of Mexico. Hang on. All right. So with the seat, of the Moroccan Empire being in Northwest Africa, which actually, if you actually, you know, looking at a map, you see um, Tun uh, you see Al Algeria, modern day Libya, Mauritania, Morocco, all of that stuff is in Northwest Africa, right? But we know that this is extended across the Atlantic, right? Hang on one second. So we know through what our prophet is. Um, established for us that extended across the Atlantic Ocean, even into North and South and Central America, right? <laughs> so from our perspective, this this could be expansive, you know. Northwest of Mexico could be applying to North America. All right, I just say it, just plain and simple like that. Why? Because the the ancient name for Africa was a Mexum, and this was all connected. So as far as we're concerned, this is Africa as well. This is a Mexum. Just because it broke off, we know that we're linked back pre, before that happened, um, before the flood, before the great earthquake. All right? So um, our perspective on this is, is um, different and um, unique. But there's also proof throughout history and um, throughout, um, I guess you could say, uh, archeology span that can back this up, even though it's not shared in the, in the mainstream, it's there. We also have the Hanno stone that was found over here on the East Coast and I uh, believe in Massachusetts, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. On that stone, they know that it has the Phoenician writing and it says, by this I claim if I'm not mistaken, then it's signed by Hanno, Hanno Bay, in the Phoenician language over here, predates anything European or anything else like that. So we know that our people have been over here for the longest. So number 33, what is the modern name for a Mexum? And the answer is Africa. All right, so the prophet actually just in that name of Mexum he revealed to us something that's not known, right? Giving us the ancient name 
for for Africa. All right. So um, just in that alone, you know, and, and some people might try to make connections with America and um, trying to think what a Mexican. I've seen people make connections with that name, Africa and America. I forgot what it was. I saw where they combined the names. But anyway, the prophet's bringing us back something that's ancient. It's not even known. Like, you, you can't find this information anywhere else. All right? And... Um, I'll give you that paper. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. So here we go. Okay, so um, the name Africa has been suggested that 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 is Greek in origin, like that the 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 continent of Africa was named, you know, by um, outsiders, right? Not sure about that. Even that that assertion isn't. Um, there's not enough proof to say whether or not that's true. Some people say that Africa is an ancient term as well, but the prophet, whether it's you know ancient or not, the prophet gave us the ancient name that our ancestors actually gave to to this land, which for our from our perspective extended all the way over here before the Atlantic Ocean was created, and that's a Mexum. Okay. Um, Question 34, what is the title given to our ruler in Morocco? And then the answer, of course, is Sultan. All right, so um, let's say pre 300 years ago, Morocco, even then when Morocco was in its decline, still was an incredibly powerful empire. And it was held under the authority of the Sultan. All right, and this lasted this lasted for at least a thousand years, possibly even longer. All right. And then this also relinks us back in to a theocracy, which is a government that's under God, where God is seen as the ruling power. And the officials in the government, including the Sultan, they seek divine guidance. All right. In order to run the government. And so the prophet's relinking us back into that. Um, as far as Morocco, from a historical perspective, the Sultan was the highest spiritual as well as the highest temporal power recognized by the, Moor, the Moors. So that means like, you know, the spiritual and the secular world, he was the highest authority, highest power. All right, Islam. And so also the prophet is relinking us back into this as well. Um, because it says, what is the title given to our ruler in Morocco? And um, some people could say that, that the sultanate or the, the sultan seat was abandoned because uh, the person who's the modern day ruler of the state of Morocco is the president. And actually I believe it was his father who, um, went into exile for a few years, maybe like one or two years. And then he returned as a king, like he, he, had, he had abandoned the title of Sultan. All right, and then his son is now king of Morocco instead of a Sultan. Okay, so um, that's something that um, if you want to, you can research on your own. But um, from our understanding, the highest ruler is someone who's who's seeking divine guidance from Allah as far as um, running the government. And we're running our uh, government as a theocracy. All right, and then uh, question 35, where do we get the name Jesus from? And then we, the answer is from the East, the name Jesus is Greek. The Hebrew name would have been Yeshua because it would not have had the J, letter J. And Yeshua means Yehovah is salvation or Yehovah saves. All right. So even though Greek 
uh, the, the name Jesus is Greek. The original Hebrew name is Yeshua. And of course that comes from the East. Islam, if anybody wants to share anything on that, feel free to speak up. Um, the name Jesus, what does the name Jesus mean? It means justice. The Latin word for justice is, 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 is the same. It's just spelled J-U-S-T-U-S. -S. And in Hebrew, justice translates as Joshua. And Yoshua and Joshua are the same name. They're just spelled a little bit differently in Hebrew. Yeshua and, and Joshua, Joshua, they mean the same thing. Yehovah salvation or Yehovah saves. So either way you put it, Jesus means justice. And justice is one of Allah's divine attributes. It's a principle and a virtue and it characterizes Allah's very nature. And then um, in Islam, one of the names of Allah is Al-Adil. It means the just and the giver of justice. And uh, of course, that's one of our five principles that we stand on. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Uh, moving on to no question 37. Did the angel give to the child that was Jesus a holy name? Yes, but it cannot be used by those who are slaves to sin. So um, the reason this is said is because the prophet was an Egyptian adept, right? And um, actually, we're gonna go to hold on. We're gonna go to Moorish literature real quick. So um, if you have the Morris literature booklet, you'll see in there where it says, Professor Drew in part, the Egyptian ADEP student, and then it has his address. This is like, this was for a card or an advertisement that he used to have when he was in New Jersey teaching. And it just says, I am a Muslim. Professor Drew's a man who was born with divine power. He was taught, the, taught by the ADEPs of Egypt. I have the secret of destroying the germs of tuberculosis and cancer of the lungs in 10 to 30 days. Also give divine instructions and interpretations of the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. Have the 10 years of Christ's life that is silent to your Holy Bible for all those who desire to know more about Jesus the Christ. All right, so, um, and the reason he was doing this or putting this out there was because he's coming to reveal information that's not known to the public, right? And with him returning us to our ways, um, for the most part, returning us to our root as the people who created the mystery systems, the schools, the, the school of thought that was used to preserve ancient wisdom from our ancient societies that basically all of creation came out of. Right. And so with this knowledge and information comes great power. Right. So you have to prove yourself. You have to prove yourself worthy of attaining this power and information or un of obtaining this understanding. So he had mastered the wisdom from the ancient Egyptian mystery school. And this is why he was um, an adept. And um, he came to reveal this information to us. 
right? He came to reveal and not conceal. So one of the things with this, the ancient Egyptian masters were masters of the, the word, the power of the spoken word. They knew that it had the power to create and destroy. There was a story where this, uh, this mystic who was, um, you may have heard me tell this before, who was summoned by a Pharaoh because they heard about the great power that he had with just words. There's actually a couple of stories, but I'll just tell one. There was um, a Pharaoh who was um, really bored and he had he had a lot of power. So he called for this, 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 this great, um, this great, uh, I guess you could say alchemist, magician who was living like a hermit because he heard that he had the power to, um, with just his words, to um, give life back to the dead. And he summoned them to his court and he's telling them, you know, he's got some people he's gonna bring out of the dungeons and they're gonna chop their heads off and see what he could do. And he's like pleading with him, like, please don't, you know, don't do that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't, don't, don't kill anybody for this. But they went ahead and like brought out some animals and they put a goose down and chopped the goose head off. And he utters the words, the head comes to life, the body comes to life and they just start moving around until they come back together. And then the goose is walking around like normal. Okay, and then this is just the story from ancient Egypt, but there's other stories like this as well. And, um, you know, most people would just look at that like the, the archeologists that say, oh, these are just stories. These are just myths, right? And hey, if you wanna say that, fine. But the prophet is letting you know this stuff is real. So there's power in the words, just the utterance of certain names, you know, they're charged with force and they can create, they can allow you to tap into the unseen, the invisible universe, uh, universe around you. And you can affect the physical reality. And so understanding this, right? You have to know that there's power in the words that you use. And so given this information or this understanding, there's some words that we can't just utter. This is also why the prophet tells us, you know, to work on ourselves, to not even curse at all, right? Why? You know, which we do all the time, right? But he's telling us this because even though some people, especially everybody who think they so conscious and smart, like, oh, I'll say whatever I want. Who made it a curse word? The European? It's like, no, um, hundreds of millions of people who speak the English language have accepted that these are curse words. And regardless of how smart we might think we are trying to revert it and say, well, I'm gonna keep doing this. No, we're just doing it because it's easy for us. It's easy, but hundreds of people have accepted this, that this is a curse word or that we're being foul and, and nasty when we're talking like this. And so if we're doing it, we're, we're using that negative energy, right? And so that's why the prophet told us that. He told us that, you know, with our own words to be careful with what we use, with what we know. And then there's some things that we don't know. And you can only know it if you've proven yourself worthy of this knowledge. You have to have power over your lower self. So that's why I saying, this can't be used by people who are slaves to sin. All right. And it's saying that there's another name for the holy, <laughs> a holy name for, for the child that was called Jesus. And it can't be used by those who are slaves to sin. So why? Because there's power in it. It could be the power of transformation, right? They could, there's power in it. And you have to show that you aren't a slave to sin to be entrusted with that power. Okay, so moving on. Number 38. What is an angel? An angel is a thought of Allah manifested in human flesh. Excuse that. Right. So, um, man. hang on. a minute all right all right so an angel is a thought of Allah manifested in the human flesh um 
So there's several kinds of angels, right? There's a whole pantheon of angels and a hierarchy and everything. But from this understanding, what we're talking about right now, we're talking about humans. In Greek, the word angelos, angelos is messenger. It means messenger. So initially that, that word was referring to a human messenger who's on a mission. Someone's on a mission with the message. And that's what the prophet Noble Drew Ali, who was an angel from this perspective, because he was a messenger. He, he had a message for mankind. This is what he's making reference to. All right. So we're not talking about some unseen being that exists on another plane of existence because <clears throat> that's possible too that's real as well talking about humans all right also like when you're looking at the the uh quran is revealed to the prophet muhammad it's being revealed to him by the angel gabriel right which implies that gabriel was a human He's a thought of Allah manifested in the flesh. He's a human. And he's he's giving this information to the Prophet Muhammad and letting him know you need to you need to um memorize this. You need to be able to recite this from memory on the spot. So maybe they're they're meditating, they're working together until he's got it down. Like this is divine revelation from Allah, the creator. All right. And so um, basically uh, the difference between this type of angel and the prophet is the role they have. Like the mission of the angel is to carry the messages to the four corners of the world. That means to all the nations. And the duty of the prophet is to save the nations from the wrath of Allah. So like in that example with Gabriel, his, his mission was to deliver this message to carry it to the four corners of the world by teaching it to the person who was going to become the prophet, right? He was serving his purpose, right? Because the prophet is a, is a Rasul, that means messenger. He has to deliver this to the world, give them the divine instructions to, to um, save them from the wrath that's coming, that's sure to come, all right? So, um, and then we already talked about this in, in that, that the angels are used to carry the messages to all four corners of the world, which means to all the nations. And the angels, just like the prophet, that's the mercy of Allah to all the nations. And then at different time periods, they have different, different saving messages, you know, different, um, different purposes, like no one could tell us that we didn't that, that that what we have is not real as far as having having our own messenger when that's in the quran three different times that every nation gets a messenger assuredly from amongst them speaking their language we have a unique issue that specifically affected us and the prophet came with the solution and he brought love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, which alone can save the nations. And that's what the prophet brought. He gave us explicit instructions. He let us know what was going on. Um, the forerunner to the prophet, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, he had the United Negro, I think, Improvement Association, right? And like, we're not knocking anyone who, who calls themselves black or African-American, any of that. These are our people. Right, the prophet um, said that this was his forerunner. He came, he prepared the people, he got them ready to galvanize, to work together across all bonds, regardless of whether they're from the Caribbean like he was, or they're from um, North America. Like he came to New York, he came to the United States to reach us, right? I'm talking about Marcus Garvey. And Marcus Garvey, had a, he had a nationality, he was Jamaican. Jamaican is a nation. It has its own government, right? It's a real nation. So, you know, he wasn't prepared like the prophet was to be even thinking on that level that, hey, 
we don't have a nationality. We're not connected to anything. Negro is something that was created to keep us away from all of that. And so the prophet came to finish that, to reconnect that. All right. Um, question 40, what does our prophet tell us? He's an angel of Allah who was sent to bring us the everlasting gospel. So um, his role was twofold. He's saving us from the wrath, the divine chastisement of Allah. And he does that by getting us back in accord with the law's law. He brought laws and divine instruction. The stuff that we've been going over on Holy Day about how to run our nations, how to run our communities, how to make them successful. And before that, it was all working on ourselves, right? So he's doing this to get us in accordance with with a with the law's law with divine law and then he's bringing the everlasting gospel that means the good news so he's letting us know how simple it is that we're in this situation sin and disobedience we tore ourselves away from a lot through sin and disobedience but by bringing us showing us the right way to go we're being re restored like i was saying earlier the whole three-fifths of man he brought us our divine creed and nationality, and we're now fully restored. Right? So he brought us the salvation and the spiritual transformation, because ultimately, you look at anything that the, the ancient Egyptians are working on, right? Ultimately, the mystery schools, all that was about personal transformation. How to subdue the lower self, the animal self. And so he brought that as well. And then it's teaching us how to rule from the lower self, not just ourselves, but also on a larger scale. Islam, um, if anybody else has any insight or any questions, anything they want to share, feel free to speak up. I yield the floor. Okay. Um, well, if yeah, if nobody has anything they wanted to share, we'll go ahead and read the divine warning. Is Brother Shaw Bay? Could you read the divine warning, please? Islam, brother, we can't hear you. You're chopping up. Um, Islam, it's okay. I'll um, I'll go ahead and read it because it, it's it's breaking up. Islam. We speak. Okay. Islam, it's okay. Islam. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You appreciate can appreciate that. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, uh, divine warning by the prophet for the nations, the citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitution, which we have the constitution and bylaws are all one family bearing one free national name. We all know what our free national name is, right? It's Moorish American, Islam. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables and they're subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. We see that. And he wrote this, you know, almost a hundred years ago. We see that still to this day, right? The whole Black Lives Matter. This is all because we don't know. Most of our people don't know that it's that simple. It, it's not just about saying you're Moorish American, though. No. Right. When we come in and learn our laws and how things are really set up, we have to move together as a unit. We have to actually live by these principles and, and work together. And by doing this now, we come under um, the constitutional fold, international law. Things change. Right. Everything changes. We're in a whole new ball game. So it is a sin for any people, any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to the names and principles that delude to slavery. I, the prophet, was prepared by the great God a lot to warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to the state of mind, to their forefathers, 
divine and national principles, that they will be law abiders and receive their divine right as citizens according to the free national constitution that was prepared for all free national beings. They are to claim their own free national name and religion, Moorish American and Islamism. That's the salvation. There's but one issue for them to be recognized by this government of the earth, and it only comes through the connection of the Moorish divine and national movement, which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world. And through it, they and their children can receive their divine rights unmolested by the citizens that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state government and not under a granted privilege as in the 15th amendment as has been the existing condition for many, <coughs> excuse me, many generations. The 15th Amendment shouldn't even, we shouldn't even need that because we existed before that. We were, we were even voting before that. We were even a part of creating this whole constitution because it was based off of our, our, um, our civilization, our great law of peace. You who doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those that know the law in the city hall and among the officials in your government and ask them under an intelligent tone, and they will be glad to render to you a favorable reply, for they are glad to see me bring you out of darkness into light. Money doesn't make the man. It is free national standards and power that makes a man and a nation the wealth of all national governments. Gold and silver and commerce belong to the citizens alone. And without your national citizenship, by name and principles, you have no true wealth. And I'm hereby calling on all true citizens to stand for a free nation, national free government and the enforcement of the constitution to help me in my great missionary work because I need support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. Help me to save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of the government, right? So this is about us falling out of the constitutional laws of the government. I'm depending on your support to get them back to the constitutional fold again, that they will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America, all right? So by coming back into the constitutional fold and operating now, we can empower ourselves and eventually govern ourselves totally. You know, whether that means we have our own states or what, however it happens in the future. But first we, got, we have to get back on our feet. I love my people and I desire their unity and mind back to their own free national and divine standard because day by day they have been violating <clears throat> the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. It is Italians, Greeks. If uh, Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America, it is no more than right that the law should be enforced upon all other American citizens alike. Why, how come we can, we don't have to? In all other governments, when a man is born and raised there and asked for his national descent name, if he, and if he fails to give it, he is misused, imprisoned and exiled. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional laws by name, uh, constitutional standards of law by name and principles, because to be a citizen of any government, you must claim your national descent name. Ours is um, Moabite. We descend from the ancient Moroccans, founders of the Moroccan Empire, because they place their trust and issue upon names formed by their forefathers. And their forefathers can't recognize Negro, Black, colored, any of this stuff. The word Negro deludes in the Latin language to the word nigger, same as the word colored deludes to anything that is painted, varnished, and dyed. Every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers because by honoring their forefathers and foremothers, your days will be lengthened upon this earth. These names have never been recognized by any true American citizens of this day. 
through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that are recognized by said national government in which they live. The 14th and 15th amendments brought the North and South in unit, placing the Southerners who were at that time without power within the constitutional body of power. They seceded from the union, formed their own, their own country, or they were in a pro process of doing that. And this brought them back in. So that shouldn't even be what we're using to vote. And at that time, 1865, the free national constitutional law that was enforced since 1774 declared all men equal and free. And if all men are declared by the free national constitution to be free and equal, since that constitution has never been changed, there's no need for the application of the 14th and then 15th amendments for the salvation of our people and citizens. So there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which was lost and that is through the above statements. Then the lion and lamb can lie down together in yonder hills and neither will be harmed because love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice will be reigning in his land. In those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of this world. But if the above principles are not carried out by the citizens and my people in this government, the worst is yet to come. So he's about to give the warning, but like he deliver, de delivers this message the same way you see um, Minister Farrakhan. He's coming with, even when he's about to, about to let um, Bush or Trump or whoever's president know about the wrath that is coming. He's giving respect and honor, right? And he's doing that because he's smart. All right, so he's saying, if they do it, it'll be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments in the world, even if you know they're not going to do it. You still have to speak what you want and also give them a chance and also, you know, show the, the advantages of doing it. Right, because the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people in this great sin must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquakes, diseases, etc. And I, the prophet, do hear and believe that this administration of the government being more wisely prepared by more genius citizens that believe in their free national constitution, all these people acting like they want, you know, their patriots and all this stuff. It's like, well, if you're a true patriot, then you need to assist with this. And if they're not, then they're hypocrites and they deserve what is coming. All right, and through the help of such classes of citizens, I, the prophet, truly believe that my people will find a true and divine way of their forefathers and learn to stop serving carnal customs and merely ideas of man that have never done them any good, but have always harmed them. So he's taking the high road. You, you take the high road. He's like, you guys are so smart. You're, you're geniuses. So come on and help assist this great ill that is occurring. You have to help to write this if you are who you say you are. Right? It's not talking trash to them. You're taking a high road because you're an Egyptian adept. And if they don't do it, well, it's it's over for you. So I the prophet am hereby calling aloud with a divine plea to all true American citizens to help me to remove this great sin which has been committed and it's practiced by my people in the United States of America, because they know help them to stop being in this position, help them to get re-educated, whatever assistance they need, because they know it is not true, the true and divine way. And without understanding, they have fallen from the true light into utter darkness of sin as there's, there is not a nation on earth today that will recognize them socially, religiously, politically, or economically, etc. in their present condition of their endeavorment in which they themselves try to force upon a civilized world. They will not refrain from their sinful ways of action and deeds that have brought Jim Crowism, segregation, and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. So he's talking about us. The reason we're suffering, the abuse that they're putting on us, is because we're going along with this thing that's been slapped on us. We're going along with it. Help them to get out of that situation, right? And they fought the Southerner for all these great misuses, but I have traveled in the South and have examined conditions there. And it is the works of my people continuously practicing the things which bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to all nations that live the life. And I'm hereby calling upon all true American citizens for moral support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of darkness into marvelous light from the prophet. 
Islam, Islam, Islamism. Okay, so he's not, you know, chastising, coming out, talking bad. Oh, we so big and bad. We don't need y'all. Y'all laws don't apply to us. That's that's not going to work. That's not even realistic. Even the situation that we're at, we don't even have our own people backing us up if we were talking that trash, right? We'd be, we'd just be making ourselves targets, easy targets. They already have those sovereign citizen terrorist labels, you know, ready. They have cells in Guantanamo Bay and all that. So it's like, okay, we follow the prophet. He's an Egyptian adept. He came with the wisdom. Yes, we are citizens. Even if some of our own people are saying that we aren't, even if they sound good with the stuff that they're saying, because they're showing you how it's a corporation and all that. Well, you could say the same, excuse me, about the Moore Science Temple of America, right? He incorporated it. It's a body politic. So it could just be a corp. If we weren't even co congregating, coming together to make a real community, it'd just be something on paper. But once we come in and actuate it, then it's real and it's official. We actually take this seriously. This is our divine creed. This is how we move. Then it's real. It's not just a corporation. And that's the reality of it. A lot of people don't want to hear that. But I'm not talking to y'all, of course. But I'm saying some of the Moors, they're going to be mixing stuff in. And it's like, nope, nope. We follow the prophet. All right. He, he was wiser than you. I'm sorry. But it's true, you know, we have protections as American citizens, and we're going to work that to our advantage, just like everybody else does. And that's, that's our key to our salvation. Islam, I'll go ahead and yield the floor on that note. Um, if anyone has anything they want to share before we close, feel free to speak up. All right, so on that note, let's go ahead and close out. Appreciate all you moors. Okay. All right, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and go into the closing of the meeting. Want to announce all meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the Circle 7 in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Please rise and face the east for the closing prayer. You do not need to repeat after me. Allah, bind our hearts and minds back to our ancient forefathers, divine creed and principles. We ask this in thy holy name and the seven Elohim. Amen. Amen. Right. Love you, Moors. Love you, Moors. Islamism. Islamism, family. Moors. Islam. Praise Allah. Allah. It's like y'all, y'all, y'all saw how the prophet did that, right? Though he, he, he wasn't speaking radical or any of that, right? <laughs> he, was, he was smooth. He was flattering them so that they, you know, y'all gonna do your job or not? You gonna help them? Because if not, you gonna get punished, you know. But he said it in a wise way to get the point across. And like, even if I know you're not gonna do it, I'm, I'm gonna still do my job, deliver the message, and then I'm charismatically. All right. Islam, the prophet says, speak in an intelligent tone and you'll have a favorable reply. Islam? Islam, watch, watch Minister Farrakhan. He does the same thing, you know? He butters them up. He, you know, he flatters them like, you guys are great. You're the most powerful nation in the world. And then this is the, this is what's going to happen if you don't do it. <laughs> Islam. 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 I had a question that, that's outside of the meeting. Has anyone else dreamed about turtles this week? <laughs> it is long, besides me and Brother Jones Bay. <laughs> it is long, well, we're, we're in the month of October. So they say the, the veil is thin in these in these months, October, November, and December, you know, we're gonna have our um, our winter solstice. So, you know, just make sure you're praying, you're doing your meditation, you know, you're speaking to a lot and you're listening to that still small voice, 
you're listening to the instructions of these times. Islam Muslims, it's going to come to you in dreams. It's going to come to you in signs. It's going to come to you in symbols. It's going to come to you in the form of all kinds of things. Just pay attention to them. Islam? Islam. 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 Islam is. Peace and love, family. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Rod, do you have your pajamas?